Today is going to be my first attempt at building a rocket stove. So, uh, so the the stove, um, as you can see, just a, just a metal canister here. And uh, I, what I've done is I've actually cut two pieces of uh, of uh, steel like this. It was from an air conditioning duct. Uh, the uh, the benefit of that is it's it's good heavy duty stuff, and some of it even had insulation on. This is going to be the top piece. The next part I've got to do here is cut that center hole out, and then choose where I want to put uh, a hole in. Okay. All right, so I've gotten a pilot hole drill. That'll make it so much easier for my jigsaw blade to uh, begin to cut the circle. Okay, so I got my jigsaw here and I'm just going to insert it into the hole and it's probably gonna make a racket. So there we go, we have our hole in the stove now and I haven't checked it for size, but I'm sure it'll be, be pretty close for now. Okay. All right. There we go. We've got our center piece out. So now I've got to spend a little time here and make sure I got everything cut to the right size. In there. Now I made my circle around the pipe here, the piece that I'm going to fit for the uh, feed chamber. Okay, so we've got our piece cut that's going to go on the outside in here. I've got a few holes in here. This was used for another purpose. I'll just get some JB Weld and, and fill these holes up. Okay, this should be about six inches now, again, where we had it before. Okay, so now we have our nine inch piece here that's going to fit inside on the, on the top here. I noticed one side of this container has a, a fair amount of rust toward the bottom, which is not surprising. I'm going to take my uh, right angle grinder with a big, uh, I call it a meat hog, uh, brush, wire, wire rope brush. And I'll just uh, knock down some of this because I'm going to want to repaint this with good uh, stove black, black paint. Well, that does it for the grinding anyway, or the sanding, uh, rough, roughing up the old uh, rust areas and whatnot. And uh, that'll make it uh, uh, quite a bit better for being able to keep the paint on a little bit longer. I've taken the liberty to go ahead and finish up the inside pipe work and uh, seal any gaps and whatever with uh, JB Weld as you can see right up here and that after a coat of black paint on here that'll look really nice I had some rust spots on the bottom of the container after brushing it off I also went ahead and filled that in with uh, JB Weld as well it's ready now for a coat of paint of course uh, I'll probably wait until after I get the uh, uh, vermiculite and everything in that's what's coming up next so here's what it looks like on the inside, as you can see. So, Okay, I poured some vermiculite into the bucket here. And this is just light, fluffy, and works as insulation around the center pipe. I'm going to be mixing some uh, slip clay with that. Uh, I've got another bucket over here where I've just started mixing in some water so that it's not quite so fluffy, just enough to kind of dampen and moisten it. We're going to start adding the slip clay now. Okay, I'm just going to add the slip clay and, and just kind of... Okay, we're going to start filling this up with uh, some of the uh, slip clay and vermiculite. 
mix. This little shovel work, works real handy for this. Okay, I've got the vermiculite in there now. And one last piece that I've made here too that's required of the rocket stove is to have a uh, tray that goes on the inside where the wood's on the top and the airflow is underneath. And when it's inside, that's what it looks like. We're just about ready to go. I'm gonna give this a few days to uh, dry out on the inside there put in the top layer of uh, tin or steel and uh, we'll be ready to fire up. So there we have our finished rocket stove. As you can see I have, uh, I have placed the, the metal ring around the vermiculite on top of the vermiculite mix and uh, uh, put it on a coat of uh, black high temp paint. So that's why it looks halfway decent for some old relic I picked up at a yard sale. Now the only thing left to do is to actually fire it up. Actually, you can see from here I've got the rack installed now on top. You could put a pot of water over the top of this grate and in no time you'd have hot water. There, I've got the grate all cleaned off and the puppy dog is waiting for me to cook her a hamburger. I couldn't resist. It's sizzling right now. There we go. And last but not least, the proof is in the tasting. Bon appetit.